Hi, this is Ian Coleman from PIA First. This is this week's video analysis for um, the dollar index and the FX majors going into the week 29th of October 2018. If I do cough and splutter uh, through this um, video report, I do apologise. Uh, I've just got a bit of a cold at the moment. Um, so basically, I'd, I feel like we've been trying to chase uh, the dollar turn, and I'm going to explain why. Uh, we've been looking at, uh, at the dollar uh, to move to the downside and in fact we got stopped out on our sterling dollar uh, long trade last week. So if we focus firstly on the dollar index, we've got a five wave Elliott wave pattern to the upside which completed near 97 the figure. Now that should dictate that we then get uh, a choppy volatile correction uh, to the downside normally in an AB uh, CD pattern. And these inside legs, uh, they, they're normally made up of three or five waves. So they're quite hard uh, to analyze and to actually forecast. <clears throat> if we look here, we can see one, two, three, that inside leg, and then one, two, three, again, the inside leg to the upside. Potentials also of a double top formation around about 97 the figure. And we've got a bearish engulfing candle uh, from Friday, uh, which uh, uh, sometimes highlights the top of the trend so we're looking for that leg now to the downside that bearish leg in the dollar index and we're going to reflect that back onto our FX majors and it's quite interesting because a few of these FX majors have highlighted patterns that do look uh, like they are also uh, looking to turn and we're going to explain and, uh, and show you what uh, what we're seeing this week so let's go to euro dollar to start with um, <coughs> Excuse me. Here is the wave pattern for the daily chart, basically reflecting uh, the opposite view of the dollar index. So again, we've got these choppy free wave patterns inside, and we're looking for that uh, now to be complete. We've got a bearish, sorry, a bullish engulfing candle on uh, on Friday, which is obviously opposite to what uh, we saw in the dollar index. Now, what's most interesting here? is the uh, AB equals CD formation. So this is the AB leg. If we then project it over, and it's an exact count, then we've got the CD uh, leg to the upside. Now, the most important factor here, as far as I'm concerned, is um, that the projection is around about 118.50. Now, we've got our bespoke resistance at 118.57. And that's really important for me because that basically gives me a good target level uh, before uh, bears re-emerge. So we're looking for this impulse leg to the upside that's not only going to be an ABCD uh, corrective formation target, but it's also our bespoke resistance. If we go to uh, shorter time frames, we're just going to look at this three hour chart. We've broken what could easily be seen. Let's get that trend line. As a wedge formation to the upside, the projected move, excuse me, for the wedge. So the first target area we're really looking at is around about 115.50. Um, I would express a word of caution just going into Monday. Um, we've got some bespoke resistance at 114.08. It has, has held. Um, if we just clear all of these off, we just look. A slightly shorter time frame. Okay, we could form a um, a bullish uh, reverse head and shoulders early on uh, early on Friday. So this being a left shoulder, this then forming the neckline head, neckline again, down in right shoulder, and then a break to the upside. Um, Fib retracement tool notes the 78.6 percent down here. So <clears throat> basically, what I'm saying is that the outlook is bullish, but I think we've definitely got scope uh, for buying into dips uh, early on Monday. Sterling dollar. Um, this time frame, I think, is very important. We've got the completion of a Elliott wave, five wave pattern, one, two, 
uh, correction in free fall, close to the 61.8% <coughs> extension level, and then down to 261.8%. <coughs> really needs to be confirmed with a break of 129.11. Uh, however, we've also got this. This is a symmetrical pattern. It looks like a bullish Gartley. So we've basically got a 127.2% extension and a 78.6% pullback level. This is a confluence area. We have seen dip buying around there. So this is quite a strong bullish uh, formation uh, for sterling dollar. If we go to here, we're looking at this AB uh, CD uh, formation target, which is around about 134, uh, the figure. So again, we're bullish. Uh, the scope for a mild correction uh, in early trading on Monday, uh, but that's all we think it's going to be. Um, dollar Swiss, and here we've got a reverse count, five waves to the downside, and then a very impulsive move to the upside. Um, levels around about uh, the one big figure have uh, found sellers. We've got a bearish engulfing candle from Friday, obviously mirroring what happened in the dollar index. Uh, we've also got uh, another um, indicator, if you like, which uh, highlights the end of a trend, and that's called a D Mark 13 count, and that's on the daily chart. So we are looking still for a move to the downside in the dollar index. Uh, we've got a previous swing low around about here, and we've got uh, bespoke support at 98.57. So that's gonna be our first target area. We could then see a bounce and a period of consolidation as perhaps we form uh, a topping formation, a head and shoulders. But at the moment, our focus here is uh, around about 98.60. Now, dollar yen, um, we are short. We had an evening uh, doji star uh, pattern posted on the uh, weekly chart. We've got reverse trend line support coming in around about 110.36. What I don't like, um, I'm going to highlight it here, is this um, is this time frame. So we've got the impulse move to the downside, five waves. Uh, we then moved higher, but we only made, uh, or we only got to 38.2% pullback level for the correction. Now, first wave corrections are normally stronger uh, than that. And we're also, that dip buying, on Friday below the previous uh, low has formed um, some bullish divergence on this four hour chart. So I'm still skeptical, if you like, um, of follow through price action in dollar yen. Um, and I'd really only prefer to sell into um, higher levels uh, in this, uh, this pair uh, going into next week. Um, dollar CAD, this is one I particularly like to the downside, and we're going to try and get short uh, early next week. We've got this wedge formation. Um, we have seen sort of four weeks of net gains. However, uh, an indecisive doji uh, candle, we had the Bank of Canada last week, uh, indecisive uh, doji candle, which highlights indecision. We've got reverse trend line resistance at 132.22. But I think this time frame, is really important. Um, we've got a bearish engulfing candle, which is stronger than a, which is actually a bearish engulfing outside candle. So it takes out one, two, three previous uh, four hours or 12 hours worth of price action. And it shows you how strong uh, that impulsive move to the downside is. Now, this still looks like an ending wedge pattern, uh, a break of 130.14. And the measured move target is 127.82. Now, the reason why I really like this uh, setup is because these Fibonacci levels are really lining up quite well with all these uh, supports. So we've got wave one from Friday and then this correction to the upside. The, that Marabuzo level from that four hour candle is coming in around about 131.16. Now, if we look across, we can see that that area was previous resistance so it's going to it's going to offer resistance again uh, to the upside it would be a nice short trade uh, when we're looking at a risk re uh, reward profile um, for dollar cad so the 161.8 percent extension is at 130.13 we've got the trend line support at 130.14 so again 
nice confluence area perhaps as a corrective bounce again to get short 261.8 at 129.22 let's swing it to the left hand side again an area of support so perhaps a mild bounce there but then the most important factor is this area which is the wedge target is a 423.6 percent extension um, commodity currencies have a tendency to extend to the 423.6 percent extension so this whole pattern if you like combined with these fibonacci levels looks really promising for uh, for a move and quite an impulsive move i think it'll probably be uh, to the downside and that's uh, going to be at least my main focus uh, going into next week aussie dollar uh, we tried to get long at 70.20 uh, both on our medium term call and intraday call on Friday we made a 70.21 low uh, so we managed to miss that one um, we have seen a bullish outside day posted often indicates the end of a trend we've got bullish divergence so the RSI is making higher lows chart makes lower lows again often an indication that uh, the downside uh, is coming to an end um, <clears throat> bespoke resistance 71.87 We've got a 61.8% pullback level, 72.02. So focusing on this area this week. What I will say is I think the scope, let's just remove all drawing tools on there. And if we go to a shorter time frame, I think the scope for buying on dips, only because we've got some bespoke resistance coming in at 71.04. Um, if we look at a reverse head and shoulders pattern, so we come down, this being our left shoulder, this being our, and then like this, and then move to the upside. So left shoulder, neckline, potentially, come down to previous support. Um, Marabuzo uh, support will be around about 70.50. Previous support is around about 70.57. So nice sort of area of, uh, decent uh, area to get to, to get long uh, at the beginning of next week if we see that dip um, and then obviously a move or a projected move to the upside towards 7190 um, euro sterling um, again some quite interesting uh, levels here uh, we've got a channel breakout reverse trend line resistance at 8905 um, if we look here, I'm just hover over the candle, look to our top left hand side, we can see that the high trade um, from um, Friday is 88.96, so pretty close to that uh, reverse trend line resistance. If we look to here, uh, we've got a channel top. Now, even if this isn't a change of trend, we should at least get a correction to the downside because. If this is, a, is an impulse wave, one, two, three, then 161.8% should at least see a correction lower. Uh, so again, you might get some consolidation around about 88.62, but the immediate bias is to the downside, either in a correction or in the next impulsive move to the downside off that trend line resistance. Um, Euro yen, this is our last one that we're going to look at. We've got uh, a hammer, inverted hammer uh, formation uh, off the daily chart. We've also got a symmetrical pattern. So we've got a 127.2% extension or just extended through 127.2 and then 78.6% pullback again just extended through uh, to 79. Uh, looking like a symmetrical pattern, looking like a bullish bias uh, and a move uh, to the upside. If we look uh, to the four hour chart is it an extended five wave pattern I'm not sure to be perfectly honest what I do know is that we've got a bullish uh, outside candle posted on the four hour chart often indicates the end of a trend um, if we break it down into very short time frames uh, again the scope for mild selling at the beginning of the week uh, may be towards 127.20 and if we think about it if we think about the reflection on euro dollar uh, the fact that we're expecting dips to be bought at the beginning of next week. If we think about the dollar yen trade setup, 
there's still scope for a move to the upside. Euro yen, uh, really, we've got to be uh, we've got to be looking at buying dips off that uh, off that symmetrical pattern. Okay, uh, I hope that all makes sense. I hope it gives you some idea, at least of what we're looking at next week and what uh, what we're focusing on. Um, good luck with your trading, and uh, we'll speak to you again next week. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.